David, where are you? I've been waiting for you the whole evening. The dinner got cold, so I had to finish my meal without you. I still left some food on the counter in case you come home with an empty stomach. Oh, I'm so sorry, darling. I forgot to tell you. Mom called right after I finished working and told me that I needed to come by her house. Not again. David, you do realize that she's been calling you over to her place for almost two months now, right? Well, she said it was an emergency, so I had no choice but to come over. By the way, I've already eaten. Mom's homemade burgers are hands down the most delicious food I've ever tasted. I even devoured two of them. Can you believe that? I could have arrived home sooner, but how could I say no to mom's apple pie? It's no doubt her signature dish. Oh, so you and your mom were having a cozy dinner together while I had to sit for hours and wait like an idiot? Do you even consider the house we're living in anymore? More importantly, am I still your wife or just merely a stranger that you happen to stumble upon? Please be mindful that I'm six months pregnant and I need your help more than ever. Emily, don't be so harsh on me. It was my fault. Mom called and said I had to go to her place immediately. Her voice sounded like she was in panic. So what should I do? I couldn't just ignore her and pretend like nothing happened. What if something wrong happened to her? Oh, and what exactly happened to her? Let me guess. A light bulb burned out or her washing machine suddenly stopped working? Well, turns out the situation wasn't so serious like she said it was. She tripped over her own feet stumbled and ended up with a swollen knee. Ugh, see? Told ya. You maybe deceived her fake naivety and childish trickery, but certainly not me. I can see through your mom's deception and read her like an open book now. Hey, watch your mouth. How could you say those cruel words to talk about my mom? She's been worrying sick about you the whole time I was with her. Worrying sick? Yeah, right. Pretending to care about me is one of her favorite acts, after all. Actually, I can already hear her voice in my head right now. She would definitely say something like, Oh, David, please go home to Emily. She's pregnant. You shouldn't leave her all alone like that. Blah, blah, blah. Look, right after I took care of her wound, she even urged me to rush home to check on you. Despite being so much in pain, she's still concerned about you. What else do you expect? I bet you could never find a mother-in-law as sweet and loving as mom. Please be more grateful and stop insulting my mom. You call that an insult? Then you surely have no clue what a real insult is. I don't see anything wrong with what I said about your mom. In fact, she deserves to be called much worse than that. You know, I had to refrain myself long enough from calling your mother out of her misdemeanors. And it's all for the sake of our marriage. But now, not anymore. Mary needs to be aware and responsible for her despicable actions. Emily, you're crossing the line. You know that? Don't even think that I'm just gonna be here all day listening to your insolent comments about my mom. She's a lovely woman and she deserves nothing but respect, especially respect from her so-called daughter-in-law. What about me? I'm not worthy of getting any respect from you and your mother even just a tiny bit? Have you ever deigned to care about my feelings? Or how terrible my body is as our baby's due date is getting closer and closer? My stomach is upset all the time. I have a heartburn, my appetite has disappeared, and I have to rush to the restroom from time to time to vomit. But I bet it's none of your concerns, right? The only thing that's going on in your head right now is your mom's nonsensical excuses to force you to come over to her place. Emily, of course mom and I care about your well-being. She's always afraid of you being all by yourself in the house. That's why she even thought of giving us a puppy to keep you accompanied. Nevertheless, you conveniently said no to my mom's kindness, which makes her really sad and disappointed. Oh, don't make it seem like your mom was the victim. How is raising a puppy gonna help me other than worsening my morning sickness symptoms? So you still refuse to admit your guilt, huh? My mom even intended to starve herself for a whole day that day and I had to go dash to her house just to make sure she was okay. It took me almost one hour just to convince her to get something to eat. After making her extremely upset, you didn't even bother to call my mother and check on her. She knows that I have a severe pet allergy because I already told her that a million times. Yet, I had to repeat myself for at least a hundred times that I don't want a pet and she still refused to understand. From my perspective, she intentionally came up with that absurd idea just to make my life more miserable than it already is. 
One thing I don't understand, why do you always disregard my mom's good intentions? Do you remember the last time she made a whole delicious chocolate cake just for you? You ate one piece and then you rushed right to the toilet to vomit all over the place. What? Now you're blaming me for that too? I never wanted to do that, but it's something that a pregnant woman can't control. You should know that better than anyone. You're really disgusting, Emily. And what matters the most is that you completely destroyed my mom's self-esteem. I can't even describe with words how much emotional damage my mother had to suffer from your reckless action. You could have just swallowed your own vomit and finished the cake. It would make my mom so much happier. Ew! You're the one who's being disgusting here, David. Swallowing my own vomit? Have you lost your mind? David, look, you're creeping me out with your obsession over your mom. I think it's about time you start correcting your behaviors and pay more attention to me and our kid, or else I'll be the one who reconsiders our marriage. I'm not in a mood for jokes, David. Fine, fine, whatever you say. Jeez. Sometimes I feel like you're the one who is acting more like my mom, not my mom herself. David, you're supposed to be here at the hospital. I almost lost my baby. Where are you? Calm down, Emily. I heard you. I'll be there soon enough. It's just that one hour ago, mom called me claiming that her house was on fire. I had to come to her immediately to see what was going on. Are you sure it's not just another trick that your mom made up out of nowhere just to seek your attention? If you want to hear my realist opinion, I actually lost track of how many times you've been blindsided by your own mom. Hey, if you don't have anything good to say about my mom, then I suggest you keep your mouth shut, okay? You always get under my skin whenever you come up with these groundless accusations to talk about my mother. Then what kind of accident was it this time? Can you make it clear to me? I guess it can't be more foolish and empty-headed than last time, and many other times before. Well, mom forgot to turn off the stove and caused her pot of soup to overflow. She didn't know how to resolve the situation, so she called me up for help. The way she talked about it made me believe that something was seriously wrong. There wasn't any other way for me but to come and check on her. A pot of soup? You must be kidding. She could have just easily handled it by switching off the stove. Honestly, a three-year-old kid could come up with such a resolution without even thinking. Well, my mom did as you told, but she still insisted that I come over to check if everything was actually okay. After that, she asked me for advice on which dress to wear when she attends her friend's birthday party today. She even showed me some new plants that she just bought to decorate her balcony. Looking at my mom being so optimistic and full of life, I couldn't help but feel so happy for her. Oh great, you and your mom were having a great time together while I'm here almost losing my life and my kid. Honestly, you'd rather put your trust in your mom's baloney other than everything I have to say? I'm so disappointed in you, David. Now I have to lie and think about what forces made me come to the decision of marrying you in the first place. Chill out, Emily. Fact is, you're still well and alive, aren't you? So what's the deal? Don't always make everything seem like it was the end of the world or you had to fight an alien to survive. <laughs> Honestly, making a fuzz out of everything is your most favorite activity in the world, isn't it? What? How can you talk to me with such a reckless attitude? Look, David. I was too exhausted with all the housework that I had to take on every day. In fact, I couldn't even walk properly. This is why I fell down some stairs and almost put our kid in jeopardy. Luckily, I was still able to reach out to the phone to call the neighbors. They came just in time to take me to the hospital. Well, from where I see it, you're the one who created this stupid mess. I mean, doing all those household chores is merely child's play. Yet, you couldn't even fulfill that simple duty. What kind of wife are you? Come to think about it, my mother has been actually right all along. You're nothing but a useless woman who has to complain about everything she does. Oh, if you think that cleaning, cooking, dusting, laundering, ironing, and washing are the easiest jobs in the world, 
Why don't you try and take care of them all by yourself? I bet you wouldn't handle the heat just for one day, let alone a six-month pregnant woman like me. Okay, okay. Whatever you say, you're the boss. Gosh, sometimes I wish that I could move out and live with my mom already. Lately, you're becoming nothing but a nuance, Emily. Just stop bossing me around and telling me what to do. Really? I'm surprised you hadn't thought of marrying your mom before you married me. I'm sure that you'll have a very comfortable life. Are you insane? Why should I get married to my own mother? You know what? I take it back, Emily. You're not only disgusting, but also crazy and amazingly selfish. The only thing you ever cared about is yourself. Just lay there in the hospital and get out of it by yourself when the doctors tell you to. Don't expect me to come pick you up. That's the price you have to take for insulting me and my mom. David, where are you at? Why aren't you answering my calls yesterday and today? I've been calling and texting you nonstop. What happened? I told you that my water broke and I got transferred to the delivery room. Oh, hey Emily. I'm so sorry. I had to rush to the hospital to pick my mother up and take her home. She just said she had surgery and had to have her appendix taken out and she was too weak to drive home all by herself. Everything just happened so simultaneously and I didn't know what to do. David, why are you still dull enough to blindly believe in everything that your mother has to say? My health and my safety doesn't mean anything to you, right? Moreover, our kid also means nothing to you? What kind of a husband and father are you really? Emily, what could I possibly do in that situation? My mom was all by herself and she almost fainted while she was talking to me on the phone. It honestly broke my heart when hearing her feeble voice on the phone. What about me? I had to give birth to our child on my own because you didn't show up at the hospital. My water broke suddenly yesterday and I was in a great panic. Fortunately, that neighbor guy heard me crying and he drove me to the hospital. He used my phone and tried to contact you numerous times, but you weren't responding. Well, I'm sorry, Emily. But just as I told you, my mom also needed my help. I also had to drive her all the way from the hospital to her house. I wasn't sitting idle, you know. What about after that? Why didn't you come to me immediately after your mom got home? I guess your mom just randomly made up a nonsensical excuse to keep you by your side, right? Well, even if she did do that, it wouldn't appear to me as shocking news either. Emily, how could I go home knowing that my mom wasn't feeling well? She was still in pain. She couldn't even walk by herself. I would be an undutiful son if I didn't stay there and take care of her. Well, yeah. Based on what you've been doing to me since I got pregnant, I'm not even surprised by now. The filial piety that you hold for your mother nearly caused tears to roll down my face. If your mom allows, maybe you could spare a little precious time to come by and see her son's face? Oh, we have a boy? That's awesome! You rock, Emily! You know that me and my mom have always wanted a boy. Now our wish has finally come true. I'm so excited to tell my mom about this. She's always been my biggest supporter and I know she'll be thrilled. Your biggest supporter? Yeah, right. Maybe I should also buy her some pizzas along the way. She's still sick at the moment, so she can't cook for herself. Me and my mom could even hold a small party to celebrate the amazing news we've just received. Don't you think? Yeah, whatever, for all I care. Oh, do you still need me to go over there and pick you guys up? Mom just told me that I had to buy some medicines for her and drop them off at her place. Unfortunately, the pharmacy is not on the way to your hospital, but mom told me that I need to get the medicines for her as quickly as possible. So can you just wait a little while? Or if you're in a hurry, you could even catch a taxi and go home by yourself. Well, 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 I bet you would say something similar. You know what? Our kind-hearted neighbor has just agreed to help drive me and our kid home. So no need for your concerns. Thank you. Really? That's so nice of him. Don't forget to thank him on my behalf. Gosh, it's such a big relief because mom has been calling restlessly to remind me about her medicines. Yeah, right? In the end, it's all about doing everything to keep your mom happy and satisfied, right? Me and our son don't hold any importance to you. How could you not even bother to ask about our son's name? Oh yeah, I totally forgot about that. Sorry. So, what is our boy's name, Emily? Please fire away. 
I can't suppress my excitement any longer. Did you name him as we discussed before? Our boy's name? Bruce Thompson. A great name, isn't it? Oh yeah, we've agreed to call him Bruce. But why does he have your family's surname? Shouldn't he carry my family's last name? I mean, I'm his father, right? You still have the guts to call yourself a father? Right, you're his dad for now, but not longer than that. What do you mean by that, Emily? I don't understand you. Well, it's because we're getting divorced, David. What? Divorce? What are you even saying, Emily? I need you to take this more seriously. Divorce is a big decision, and it's hurtful to me when you talk about it so matter-of-factly. Please make it clear to me, Emily. Emily, please answer my calls. We seriously need to talk. How could you suddenly decide to get a divorce and then stay silent on me like that? Can you just take a break from bombarding my phone with your stupid text and voice messages? I've had enough of your constant disturbance already. But Emily, why all of a sudden you just moved out of our house and left me with divorce papers on the dinner table? What happened? I truly can't get a hold of what is going on right now. What's so difficult to understand? Oh yeah, of course. You never take a look back to see how badly you treated me. So how could you know what caused us to part ways? What was it? Please get straight to the point. You didn't even let me see my son's face. Well, you could have seen our kid if you chose to come to the hospital when I gave birth to him. If there's any conscience left in you where you still consider yourself Bruce's father, just stop by my parents' house and pay us a visit. With that being said, please notify me before you come. I don't need to ask for your consent to see my own son. Don't be so mean to me. But why are you doing this to me? Please tell me, Emily. Don't you see? It's an eventual consequence of you being so caught up with your mom's baloney. She got complete control over you and made you obey every command she gave. You call yourself my husband, but you never pay the slightest attention to how hard I was struggling every day with my morning sickness. Not a single day you come home early to lend me a hand with the housework. But I thought we were doing just fine. I mean, you didn't even let out a single word of complaint or lament. So I guess everything was still under control and no need for me to interfere with anything. Oh, just because I didn't complain doesn't mean I was feeling fine to be treated like a complete idiot. You're my husband. You should be mindful of my feelings without me having to tell you everything in detail. In fact, even after I had warned you about your mother's sinister intention to tear us apart, you still insisted on living by her rules and doing her bidding. You know what? You're the textbook example of what they always call mama's boy. What? How dare you call me that? What's wrong with me doing everything my mom tells me to do? She sacrificed most of her life bringing me up and taking good care of me. For me, my mom's like an angel on earth and I have all my respect for her. Yeah, right. If Mary was so innocent and kind and sweet like you always say, why did she waste her time making up a story in which she had to go to the hospital for an appendix surgery and made you come to pick her up? To make matters worse, it was the day our son was born, and you weren't even there to see him, nor take care of me. What do you mean? She didn't even make anything up. She was in the hospital that day. Well, I actually came to the doctor's office, which your mom attended, and asked the doctor about her hospital stay. Turns out, she went to the hospital for back pain, and there was no surgery. I can show you the report that the doctor gave me. You were completely fooled by your own mom, David. And for the record, it's obviously not the first time your mom has lied to you about something. So don't be too shocked about it. What? So she lied to me about that? I can't believe it. Suit yourself whether you choose to believe it or not. But please hurry up and sign the divorce documents. I can't wait to get away from you and your toxic mother for good.